This is Shimpling Farm in Suffolk. It's a mixed organic farm which has been in John's family for over four generations. But with the pressures of climate change and sustainability, the farm has had to adapt in order for it to survive. We are now farming uh, without the use of um, artificial fertiliser or pesticides. Mm -hmm. And so that's um, changed our farming system completely into something that is sort of much more natural, sort of building fertility naturally within the soils. And so it's changed, changed hugely and we've had to learn fast to, to work out how to do that as well. As well as eradicating the use of chemical sprays, another big factor in making the farm more sustainable is livestock. This flock of sheep was introduced to the farm nine years ago. What role do your sheep play on this farm? The grass and clover lays are building fertility in the soil. Uh, the uh, sheep are eating that and also therefore, you know, dunging on the fields and uh, creating a natural fertiliser. Uh, but the other thing the sheep are doing are they're grazing our uh, areas of our farm to keep weeds down so we don't have to use herbicides. So they're bringing an incredible amount uh, to our uh, rotation. Livestock do two things. You know, one, they can turn inedible plant-based food into very edible food for humans. Um, the second thing is that they actually, when they defecate, they actually, that bacteria that breaks down that herbage, feeds the animal, but also produces methane, is full of both bacteria and fungi. And when that defecation hits the ground, it inoculates the soil. And most people forget that 60% of the world's biodiversity is not in the air. It's not in the trees, it's under the soil. And soil biology uh, is inoculated by feces, by animals eating and defecating. And so our agriculture is very circular. If we take one part of the, of the circle out, you lose the circularity of agriculture. So ruminants, that being cattle, that being sheep, that being dairy cows, are absolutely important to the biology of the food chain from animal down into the soil, into the plant, back up into the animal again. After visiting the sheep, we visit one of the fields where John grows a special crop for the flock. So uh, the crop we're looking at at the moment, this is called lucerne and it's a legume. So what it does, it has these great big long roots that goes down into the soil and uh, they're looking for water but they're looking for nutrients as well. And the reason why we've been really interested in this crop, a lucerne, is because of that deep rooting depth. Because with climate change and getting much drier springs, uh, we need crops that have the ability to really search for moisture. Uh, and so, you know, this is going to be a big thing for us. The strong connection between crops and livestock, however, wouldn't be possible without the use of modern technology. These are different things we use for seeding. Uh, and we're farming organically and some people think that it's sort of done in a very old fashioned way, but actually we're using all modern technology to help us. So this is guided by a satellite. It also has a camera on it, which means that it can weed in between the rows of crops that it has sown. So we're using, you know, a, a very sort of a modern organic way of farming. Shimpling Farm is a modern example of where livestock and crops are grown in synergy. But how is the farming sector working towards creating sustainable farming practices that not only meet demands, but reduce the industry's carbon footprint? It is our role to speak with farmers, not at farmers. So this is about actually having trust in our levy payers that they are our future. And it is about empowering them with better quality knowledge so they make better quality decisions. They actually make more money and they reduce their environmental footprint, not just on carbon, but on water quality, on biodiversity, because what they do is they deliver multiple public goods, which actually the marketplace does not recognize at this stage.